Hi everybody, it's Autumn, and today we're in the apothecary. And I wanna show you how to make a tincture and tell you what a herbal tincture is. <clears throat> and more specifically today, we are going to be making a Vitex Agnus Castus tincture. And so it will be using Vitex berries that are whole and organic. Let's see here. Is there anything? Yeah, so Vitex is a wonderful purple, well, it's a wonderful tree, but it flowers these beautiful purple flowers uh, around here in Texas. It is native to the Mediterranean, Mediterranean, and it is naturalized here in Texas. So there's gonna be two ingredients. There's the Vitex berries, and then there I use Deep Eddy Local Vodka. Now you can use vodka, or you can use apple cider vinegar, or you can use uh, vegetable glycerin to make a tincture. So for people who are sensitive to alcohol or cannot have it for different reasons, then you can make an apple cider vinegar or a, um, or even for children, a vegetable glycerin extract tincture. So, but today I'm gonna be showing you, this is just an example of a tincture. So this is one that I made with Whorehound, H-O-R-E-H-O-U-N-D. And Whorehound is wonderful for coughs, but it doesn't taste very good. So a lot of times in children, we'll like make sugared candy with it in order to get them to be able to take the medicine, right? A spoonful of sugar. So, um, but today, like I said, hi, Deborah. Um, like I said, today we are going to be talking about, are we going to be doing one with Vitex berries? And so here I kind of make mine in larger doses, but you can, let me grab here. So I do have a small eight ounce jar here where you can start off making a tincture if it's kind of your first time. I know I started with definitely smaller volumes and then try out and see how it does, but Vitex tincture is pretty simple. So I have a 64 ounce or a half gallon mason jar here, and this takes about that whole bottle of uh, 1.75 liter vodka. And then I have these um, canning funnels. Absolutely an apothecarist and home herbalist um, best friend because I can't do this without them. It's not as easy. So usually when I make a tincture, I will fill it about a third to two thirds, depending on the strength that I want, depending on if I'm going to be cutting it with honey and whatnot. But in this case, we are going to fill it about a third and I will put some pictures on tomorrow or even a video because even after tonight, the color of um, the berries will already be infused in there. It'll be really a dark, dark, rich kind of amber, purple, black. So I am just going to put the dried berries in here. Now you can use fresh as well. If you're going to use fresh, you want to use a little bit more because it does still have the um, water content in there. So I would say, let's see how this is. Yeah, that's a little bit over a third, but we'll go ahead and go with it. We're just going with, I do a little bit by intuition, and so it's kind of a little bit more difficult because I'm like tax time to talk about um, ratios, but um, when it comes to the single herbs, the other uh, <laughs> tinctures, I definitely have the, um, the ratios written down. But um, hi Eden, hi Melissa. So making a Vitex tincture here. So we have the berries and I'm just gonna add vodka. And that's pretty much what you do. You let it sit for about at least six weeks. The longer you let it sit, the more that it's going to be infused. Slow your pour, Autumn. Do, 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 do. And then you can strain it using muslin or cheesecloth. You can see kind of my straining method on my um, website. I have an immune fire cider free video and PDF download. And I did a 20 minute video on how to make that tincture for the immune system. But let's see. Oh, Autumn, where's the lid? Come on now. You think you'd be ready. Okay, so this is a Vitex tincture. And so, do do do. You probably wait about at least six weeks, like I said. And with the Vitex tincture, so this specific berry is used as a fertility, endocrine, 
uh, and an endocrine gland tonic. It regulates hormones in women and men. It increases the luteinizing hormone. It normalizes progesterone. It's great for PCOS. I have a client who has cycled for the first time four months in a row in her life at 40 because of using my Vitex. And then it helps with menstrual irregularity, PMS, breast tenderness, and fertility. It inhibits the follicle stimulating hormone. It normalizes estrogen. It helps with menopause, hot flashes, endometriosis. I know that personally from endometriosis. And it also helps with fibroids. So Vitex is wonderful. You can already see it's starting to darken here. And I really like tinctures. This is an example of the Vitex tincture. I know the light, I kind of, I'm in front of a window, so it's blowing it out a little bit, <laughs> um, but it's available on my website. And so there's kind of different ways to be able to dose it. So you use 30 to 40 drops, which is about a dropper, dropper full or two, and you use it for about 21 days. So if you're not cycling, you use it for 21 days and you stop it for seven days, mimicking the cycle. So it works um, in that way, rhythm rhythmically with your body. You can take it safely long term. And then during perimenopause, you wanna take it one to three times a day and it helps with that. Perimenopause is the beginning of menopause when symptoms are starting to come on. So Vitex tincture is one of the things that I use in my arsenal for fertility as well. I have a client who gave birth at 49 this December and we're talking about working on her next baby together. So. Um, there's definitely a lot of different, you know, different aspects being a gut health coach where we talk about food as medicine and things like that and, and helping someone with fertility. But um, let's see, Amy, can you just eat those little seeds, the little berries? So the berries are semi bitter. I'll go ahead and I'll take a dropper full of this. When I started dosing this, I had to cut it with an orange juice shot. And it's just, it's a little pungent. It's a little bit bitter. Um, it's a little strong. It's very deep. I've learned to, to love the flavor. Now, this can be very easily cut with some honey, or the other way that I like to do it is to mix it in tea. So I have my Lady Support Blend tea that I put it in, and this has nettles, lemon balm, peppermint, milky oat tops, um, red clover, and cleaver, and I actually mix it in for my private clients. Um, and you know, cause I usually make their own special lady support tea if we're working together on fertility or, um, hormone balancing or something like that, because depending on your age, you may need to have some more lymph cleansers, different uterine supporters. Um, and obviously if you're trying to get pregnant or if you are pregnant, we definitely want to avoid any uterine stimulants. So, and then let's see, Deb has stepdaughter who might need, yes. So this is really great um, with young women who are even, uh, Vitex is wonderful for, they really call it, um, you know, the mother maiden um, and uh, crone, kind of as we, as we age, as we gain in wisdom within the herbal community, this is known to be able to be used as soon as a woman starts menses and even as they're exiting their menses through menopause. So it works with the woman depending on what they need. And yes, Amy, I know it's very strong. I know that you tried the tincture, <laughs> um, but you've also had the tea as well. So um, with the tea, so if somebody was wanting to use um, the tea, I would suggest that they would stop those seven days. And I would add in probably a little bit of a stronger Vitex. A lot of my clients do the Vitex tincture and they have it in the tea to get, uh, also, kind of double whammy. Um, so usually in the tea, it's not as strong, but if you're wanting to use it in that method, you would definitely want to make it a little, a little bit stronger. Um, and then be able to skip those seven days if you're using it therapeutically in, in that reason. Um, if you were wanting to do the Vitex a little bit stronger in a tea, we might do one like mixed with different roots to ha kind of mask the flavor a little bit, you know, ginger, cinnamon, sassafras, even valerian, depending on the situation. Um, and things like that. So that's how to make a tincture. I don't want this live to kind of go too long, um, but thank you guys for joining me here live. And if you weren't live, go ahead and leave a comment down below if you're watching the replay. And let me know if this was helpful to you. I'm thinking about putting together an apothecary course, which is gonna probably, I don't know if it'll be one to two weeks depending, and it'll be a live thing. And it'll probably be 
maybe one to two hours on Zoom, and really just talking about setting up your home apothecary, what different equipment is behooving to have in the beginning, and what you can wait to be able to buy. And then I also plan on shipping out little half ounce um, herb packets to be able to do some of the things that we'll learn about uh, during the course. And that'll probably be a $50 course, so it'll be something that you could get for yourself or that you could gift to somebody else as well. Um, take it with a friend, you know, and be able to start making uh, home herbal remedies for you and your family to be able to support yourself naturally. Um, but other than that, uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you next time. Let me know if you have any questions. And, uh, you know, if you're like, well, Autumn, you didn't say this about a tincture. Or what about that? You know, there's some things that I forget to mention because I've just, you know, been doing this for a few years. So um, just let me know. Anyways, love and light until next time. Bye, everybody.